uh, just start back at the beginning. Um, and then we'll just start it off when we post it from there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Your call. It's uh, so welcome to the TLG catalog masterclass. Uh, today I'm uh, your host and um, I'm uh, I'm in the Nest team since more than one year and um, um, today I am, so I invite you to ask any questions along the way and um, please um, don't hesitate I I know my way so um, yeah let's get started what um, what is the scope of this masterclass so first of all we learn the basics of our tables and turn which are the basis, um, um, so the fundamentals, fundamental packages are packages that uh, build the TLG catalog. Um, of course, we use them to create clinical data tables. Um, in doing so, we will showcase some um, TLG catalog, uh, some elements, some templates that are ready to use and available open source online. Um, and uh, at the end, I will just ask you, tell me um, a template and I will show you how it works. Um, can we create it? Of course, from the catalog. <laughs> um, so yeah, of course we have exercises to get there. And um, I would love to have as expected outcomes that you understand how our tables works and uh, how they interact uh, interoperate so our tables and turn you can use to create uh, outputs in instant let's say very fast <laughs> um so posit cloud i think uh, phil uh share you shared it to everyone yeah i'm gonna post it in the chat um, box as well so yeah thank you and um yeah it's um so it's here I'm happy to show that real quick, but let me put that link in the chat box. So I think it might be a little bit different for them if they just take the link that's in the chat box. It should take them directly into uh, the project that they're going to play with for today. And it looks like it's working because yeah. a bunch of people have spun it out. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, I will work on my project, which is will be the only one untitled, I hope. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, it's the same. You have the same um, things. Um, everything is available on um, on CRAN, so you can even install them on the fly. Um, it's already installed because this is the template, and it's also already installed in the in the one that you have. Um, it's just to have everything on the same at the same point standpoint. So okay, you are you're set. Um, <clears throat> so what is the TLG catalog for some introductions? It's, um, it's a vast catalog of templates that are already made and you can, I mean, it's designed to copy paste and adapt to your needs. Um, of course, uh, this, this, there is the QR code if you want to assess the, the website. Um, I mean, why, why it is relevant, the TLG catalog? So. First of all, it's a long and stable project, meaning that uh, uh, it was funded by Roche um, and it's uh, in active development uh, since four years and we open sourced it um, within, in a, within a year. So it's um, now it's for everyone. It's validated daily. So we have um, state-of-the-art um, uh, testing, integrated testing for all our packages and um, thousands of tests of uh, all the tables that we provide. They are um, always tested every day at, I think, seven in the morning. So we wake up with uh, the good news, um, if something happens, of course. Then it's tailored for clinical trials. So both turns and um, mainly turn has a lot of statistics, methods that are made for clinical trials. Um, the general scope of, uh, of the whole project is to use R instead of SAS. And uh, um, this year we are aiming for end-to-end -end fully R-based TLG filing, um, which would be, I mean, I'm sure if you are here, you heard a lot about this and why it's, um, it's fundamental um, to shift towards an open source effort. So first of all, 
and it's something that everyone wants. It's a faster approval. And um, collaboration is uh, what accelerates industry towards standardization. And this is also welcomed by regulators. So we know that um, FDA is happy about this um, open source effort. And um, of course, this is um, also good because everyone can benefit from this, also academia. And at the end, we have uh, we would have a larger impact if we collaborate and we work together. So everything is based on our table center, at least the TLG catalog. What are they? So as I already mentioned, they're open source and they're funded by Rush. Uh, you can use them to analyze and report uh, more than 200 clinical trial data, um, clinical trials then. And uh, all of this is layout based framework. So it means that you can write the layout without seeing the data and then uh, uh, reuse this layout for different uh, data sources. And this is very, very useful if you have um, a lot of similar data sets uh, and um, the analysis itself is not really um, dependent on, um, on the data. So you have a, a method that you want to replicate and use uh, um, over, so a model, and you want to use so on different um, data sets, you can do it uh, very fast and you can modify the layout without having to change the data set itself. So the structure is uh, this one. So this is our table, so which is the core tabulation system. We have uh, a layout um, framework, as I was saying, um, that creates faceting. So it's basically subsetting the data and then instructing how to format it and uh, how to analyze it. And this is um, the core value derivation that then you um, produce uh, the table. Then you add the, the data frame that is just um, a classical data frame, uh, could be a table, whatever you prefer. And um, this is um, this must be just um, columns with variables, right? With observations. Um, you use you combine this through to create a table object, which is um, our uh, internal structure framework that then can be output in different uh, formats, like um, a classical ASCII, ASCII uh, file, so TXT, SCV, also we have PDF, RTF, and recently we will go out uh, with DOCX um, in uh, a couple of weeks maybe one month. It's still, uh, it's already on the main branch, it just needs to be on CRAN. Um, as I was mentioning before, layouts are a very useful abstraction for data filtering and subsetting. And, um, um, and then you decide how you want to represent information and how you want to analyze it. And it's highly reusable. That's why the TLG catalog is very, easily to adapt and easily to copy and paste and reuse. So this is the, the thing that happens. So there is always a build table, which uh, takes a layout, a data frame, and creates a table object. Um, and then, of course, a printing. For example, this produces um, um, a SCI file, but you can also produce HTML, I forgot about that, and so on with dedicated functions. So. Now, this is um, the basic of our table. So you load our tables, then you, so I can show you directly. Um, so you can see that the green part is the layout. So you create a basic table, which is a barren table with nothing in it. Then you split the columns. So you do a subsetting of the column. You filter the columns by R, and then you analyze age as a mean with this specific format. Of course, this is only the layout. You need to build the table, and then you get uh, the table object uh, that you can print um, in a SCI file, for example. So very fast. Um, you can um, load our tables. Then uh, you say basic 
stable, split uh, columns by arm. And you want also to split maybe the rows, so you do also subsetting by rows. And you can say that, for example, strata one. I know because I'm going to use a, a data set that uh, has these columns, but you can check very easily this information. And then you analyze the age. This is called the analyze function, and it's, a, it's a, what um, you need for um, for outputting um, a cell, so some, some output. Um, then you want some formats. Like um, the one before, where it was on the format, and then this you can assign it to a layout. There's, and um, now I have um, this data set that is coming from formatters. It's a very simple. I uh, think you can see that you have um, C, A, B, B as a strata one. It's uh, then you have um, age, and then you have a different kind of information. You just do build table of layout. Hey, David, and, um, sorry to interrupt. Um, uh, people are having a hard time seeing. Do you mind zooming in just a bit on the yeah, comments? Of course. Yeah. There you go. No problem. Ah, oh, that's so much better. Too much. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> no, that's so. that's I, it's it's bigger the much. better. I think as long as you're comfortable with it, that's the right balance yeah. to do, you know. Sorry guys and girls. Um yeah. So this is what we got. It's a bit more complicated here. You can see you have the stratas. Okay, let's go a bit bigger. Um you have the strata. And the, the mean, so the calculation you made, uh, the analysis function you used, you see the format is the one that you, we specified, and we have arm one, arm two, arm three. Now, if we go back, we see, of course, what I just showed you. It's um, so if you want to know more on table layouts, we will cover some of this, but uh, just uh, go on um, our tables, the introductory vignette. Uh, that you can find uh, here. Um, of course, I think it's, it's shared, right? It will be shared in the presentation, right, Phil? I will also keep it uh, small if it's so fine. <laughs> can you see? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. Um, so anyway, the fundamental things that um, uh, build um, Constitute a layout are the split rows by split calls by that do the subsetting, the filtering on the columns and on the rows or on the rows. Then uh, you have the cell value derivation in which you have analyzed, which is uh, um, where you put uh, your analysis function or summarize row groups. But that's the same, but for labels, we will see some example of this. Um, if we want more than one. Analysis function. So, so, for example, if you want um, to do a mean and uh, a standard deviation, we can do it from uh, inside uh, the analysis function. And um, we use in rows. So, in rows is a wrapper that takes uh, what you what you want to output. So, one cell. Um, so, for example, the mean and the standard deviation, and um, it makes them uh, uh, stacking as a, a single cell. So it's uh, like uh, a wrapper of, um, of cells. So you have the splitting on the columns that, for example, these are different arms on the rows that um, are different countries. And uh, inside each cell, it's each uh, subset or faceting, you have to uh, analysis results. Um, this is an example of an, a more complex analysis function in which you have a mean and standard deviation for the first cell. And as you can see, you can input the, the format, which is, I mean, can be this way. Actually, formats can be also functions, but we will not uh, dwell on that too much because it's uh, quite complicated. Um, 
it's um must very powerful I must be honest anyway um and also the median with min max and you can see the output um, would be uh, something like that mm. now that we covered a bit uh, what the rtables does we move towards turn so turns is basically um construction over uh, rtables to implement analytic components uh, um, that are standard for clinical trial reporting. And this makes uh, things much faster because you can use uh, um, already made uh, statistical functions and uh, analysis, analysis function. And this we will see some of those. Um, meaning that, for example, if you want to do a Cox regression, you just use directly the function that does that. Uh, that we we design. Uh, an example, this is, uh, don't look at it too much. This is uh, an example in which you have uh, a very simple uh, layout. It just, there is a lot of titles, uh, subtitles and provenance footer, a lot of decoration, but the core is that you have uh, uh, three different um, uh, functions that you use to analyze a factor or a numeric like age is a numeric, sex and country are factors. And this is what you would do in our tables. And this is what you would do in turn. Why? Because the turn has already um, a switcher between uh, uh, factors and numerics, and you can get very fast uh, where you want. The chat, if uh, if not, that's fine too. I was just yeah, kind um, <clears throat> Yeah, um, I think it's it's okay to share it. Just I, I need um, to see about permissions and so on. Probably it's better if I do it afterwards, also because my computer is a bit um, okay. Shaky that's today. perfectly fine. <laughs> Got it. it. Sounds uh, good. Um, yeah. So, so don't don't bother too much about the decorations here, because it's really. Um, I mean, you can see that this is a title, it's just a string. Subtitles can be more than one string. Um, and provenance footer is another string, so it's just decoration. And then you, know, you have analyzed virus, which is the wrapper. And um, I invite everyone to do this once you load the library. <laughs> um, once you load turn, because you have all the information and uh, even more complex examples uh, um, in the in the function documentation. If you go down, you have tons of examples. Um, <clears throat> yeah, here um, I can just show you briefly what is the output. The output um, um, it's it's this one, and um, you can see that this is the decoration, so the title um, subtitles. And this is the prominence footer. You have um, country, sex, and age, and you see that there is a difference. If it's a numeric, you have these functions. If it's um, if it's a factor, you you have these functions. Um, so all of this depends on what you use uh, in the stats variable. So, for example, if you do, just do and you just count, and you would add so only the counts of um, these uh, um, these elements, which is per se not really useful. But uh, you can find all the statistical functions um, um, in the documentation. So this was just a, a brief introduction to turn, just to to show you that. Uh, Turn has um, already built in some of the um, some of the fundamental statistics and formats and labels that you you would need. Also, indentation in some cases can be a bit different. Uh, so, like um, uh, for um, aggressive uh, aggressive events, adverse events, um, and you have stats, formats, labels, and the indent modes. Of course, it's very sim. I mean, and you, you have this uh, with the dot, sort of differentiated from the R tables basis. 
Um, as I said before, I invite everyone to to do a question mark and just see the, the functions and see the documentation and main, main, mainly the examples I think are very useful. Um, so now we we go a bit more technical. We have the examples. And um, yeah, the examples. Um, so <clears throat> you could use your dummy data uh, that we provided in, in um, turn and our tables actually. But for this case, we have ADAE and the ADRs uh, that are in turn. So you can see that you can access them this way. Um, you can also um, you can also use uh, real data, of course, or um, random CDs data on your locker. We will see afterwards that we will need that. Um, there is also CDs data. We have a, a lot. Um, uh, sorry, a CDA data. Um, we have a lot of packages for this, and we are trying to to get. Um, I mean, these are all synthetic data sets. Um, used for testing and examples. Um, yeah, so um, example one uses only ADSL. Example two will use ADSL and ADE. And uh, the three, the third uh, will use uh, ADSL and ADRs. There will be some preprocessing. So as I already mentioned, uh, everything um, Go, it's not built until you built it with build table. So remember always when while you're playing to, to use build table. Um to yeah, to 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 see something and we will use it um, every at every step. So I mean we can go together even if um, you don't have the slides and, and we will be able to um created this demographics table. If you want uh, actually to see all of these in action, um, I mean, you don't need the slides because you can go directly to the TLG catalog and, um, and just uh, search for it. So like a demographic table. Um, <clears throat> it's in T01. You have, um, a bit of pre-processing, but this is um, depends what you you need. Uh, I mean, we have a, a lot of specifics here. Um, as you as you know, you can make it as you wish. So you can put what uh, what you need, and um, all the pre-processing is just to get um, all of this information out of the of the data. Um, so you don't need to wait for me, but you can go here and uh, click code. And you can see that uh, can be very simple. <laughs> once you do, um, once you have uh, the data set ready. Um, anyway, we, we can go step by step to create a very simple one that has only uh, sex and age. Um, first of all, we say basic table, show call counts equal true. This is to show the number of, um, so the counts of elements in the columns. So we can do it together. Um, <clears throat> so again, load uh, there. Then we only use ADSL for this uh, exercise. So we can do turn X ADSL. Then, uh, we do um, show call counts. And then we can build directly the table with ADSL. You see, in this data set, we have a bit less <laughs> points, but um, I don't think it's going to hurt us. Um, here you can add all the information on all the decoration, like titles, subtitles, uh, main footer. Provenance footer. Um, I can show you briefly how to add the title.
This is the empty zero one, so we say the empty zero one. Now we split columns. So we want uh, arm um, the arm information. So we want to subset by columns. And you can see already that the uh, call counts changes. So we have uh, this kind of data with this number of uh, uh, arm A, uh, arm B, and arm C. Now we can proceed with uh, adding an overall column that can be done with uh, the label like all, and we get all here. Maybe we can say all patients. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so you can see that you get all patients with us the same number of before. Okay, now we want to analyze something. So we use the built-in analyze bars. It's, um, it's coming with turn as we showed. So we say analyze uh, bars, then we analyze age. And then we specify the stats. <clears throat> oh, I don't know which one was there. Probably. Let's skip the <clears throat> so the mean is the the medium. range and we can see that we have uh, um, this kind of output we are not showing the age um, label because we need to specify bar labels in here And this is age in years. Yeah. So <clears throat> Specify that is visible the label, and uh, we have uh, um, exactly this table. Uh, now we can also add uh, another analyze bars if you want, uh, for example, to use uh, so the um, to analyze um, sex, for example, and we do. Before we had also count fraction. And as you can see, you have the number, the counts, and the, 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 um, the fractions. So this is the, the count and the percentages. <clears throat> um, if you want to get the stats available, we have um, an utility function. I don't remember what it's called. Uh, yeah, we just created it. So yeah, it's um, it's coming with the next Chrome release. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, as you can see, you build the table finally and you get uh, uh, what you were saying. Okay, here um, I didn't use the, um, the N, but as you can see, you can add it, you can take it out, what you need. 
Now, example number two, if uh, we don't have questions. Do we have questions? Let me check the chat. Yeah, I think there's quite a few here. If you want, <laughs> if you want to tackle them or I can try to read yep. them out loud to you, whichever works best. Um, so it, uh, any option for uh, of different alignments for the retency percentage in parentheses? Um, yeah, that um, but that's a bit complicated because you need to use um, a format function. Um, can be done. It's not too complicated. Um, but it's um, we can see uh, about it uh, at the end. Mm. It is possible to adjust length of columns uh, using turn. Uh, you mean you mean width? Uh, yes. Yes, it's principally used for export. Um, I can show you. So like, um, let's call this um, table. Then we say export as, um, as you can see, this is uh, as also docx, but anyway. Um, <clears throat> so table, then you keep file null, and then you, um, I think it's called widths. It's called widths. Yep. And then there are three columns, so you can say, I don't know, ten, ten. I know there are actually four um, because there is also the all all patients. So, so there are five. Sorry, <laughs> because there is also the row. Um, yep, another ten. Yeah, but did you um? Yeah. Did you show a link that showed different codes for creating tables? Just shared it with me. I'll put it in the chat box so people can grab it. <laughs> Thank Perfect. you very much. I think I it was the uh, the stable <laughs> TLG catalog link. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, if you. Um, yeah. Perfect. So. <clears throat> Yeah, let me use the main one and um, yeah, let's go back to oh, spoilers. Um, yeah, I will show you the column widths. Very fast. So again, we save it as table. I have to. So actually, you can use propose call with. That tells us uh, what uh, what are the proposed call widths. So these are the proposed call widths um, for our table. It means that this is the way it's uh, it's usually plotted. So it calculates the um, the width um, and then uh, proposes something. So we can do again. Um, um, an export without a file. So we can export to um, the console. <clears throat> of course, this is uh, very ASCII, so you can cut it. And uh, yeah, you have uh, this. Of course, this is split this way because uh, it's um, the word is longer than the split we provided. I think it is uh, six, nine, and ten. Is also considering this, so it's splitted. And you can also 
exaggerated, it's dry. Yeah, and you can see that it's still uh, happening. And of course, you can also do 15, uh, whatever fits your needs. Yeah. Any other free questions? No. Uh, let's say there are 10 columns to be shown on a report, only first uh, five columns are fit to the page and next to uh, will be handled here in this package. Yes. Yes, we have the paginations. Um, so I can show you, let's see. So let's say that uh, you have, um, so this is, um, I think a character per page, something like this. And if we, if we do like this, we know that this is 59, so let's say 40. And you can see that um, it's split. Now this is uh, just a character placeholder for the um, new pages. Of course, if you have like, if you export as PDF, you would have um, that. Maybe I can try to show you. How to export as PDF? Because we need a file. Call it uh, with a lot of creativity. Um, table.pdf. And you have your PDF with your weird, uh, <laughs> very weird table. <laughs> Um, that will have been paginated. Okay, so I think we can move on. Um, if you want me, if you didn't answer to some question, reiterate them, revise them, and I will go back to them. So now example number two is um, adverse events <clears throat> for a system organ classes. Um, and PT table. So this is um, again you can find it in on the on the catalog. So if you search for um, adverse event um, system organ class, you can find um, one version of this. Probably is more complete, but um, um, here we will just follow this um, exercise step by step. So. Here we have um, we use two um, data set. One is ADE, the other one is um, ADSL. So I'm gonna use again the the one that is in um, in turn. <clears throat> then we will pick this out. So, so you can also assign it and print it. Um, <clears throat> so now we start by using ADAE and use ADSL as alternate counts. So the counts are calculated with ADSL while the uh, results. Uh, so we use the um, user user ID the patient ID, and uh, instead for all the counts. Um... <clears throat> yeah. So <clears throat> this is the first thing, and we get the same uh, because it's the same, uh, the data set of origin, um, it has the same number of uh, patients. Then we do again the split columns. And uh, then we have uh, analyzed number of patients. This is a custom turn function made for exactly for this scope. So um, we can say split calls by R. And then we say analyze number of patients. Um, <clears throat> yeah, of course you need the, the user ID. So 
So here is the basic one, with, uh, which has the standard um, values, but we know we want only unique with this specific label. So we write uh, um, stats unique. And then uh, we have uh, labels. Um, <clears throat> sorry. And you can see now that we have only this one as here. So we have um, uh, the unique counts. So um, <clears throat> next, um, we want to add um, um, a split label. So um, basically, we want to split by system organ class. So we do split rows by. And we want also to have um, a specific label, so system organ. Um, <clears throat> so it's called split label because it's the it's the split, so it's the name of the subsetting. And uh, now for brevity, I will write only this. Um, but then we also want um, want it. Um, so if I just do this should appear in the table, right? While uh, I want, um, I mean, it doesn't appear uh, the split label because uh, it's um, the name of the splitting. This is, these are actually the values of the splits. So the subsetting. So if I want um, also to see the label, I can say, okay, let's put it um, top left. And I will see that uh, we have it um, top left. Well, now we can uh, summarize number of patients. So <clears throat> again, uh, we use the same variable and we uh, put null for the um, labels because it, we don't want them to appear. Um, so, of course, the order matters because you would have, um, so for example, here you split after the analyze. So you first do the analyze, then you split the rows. As you can see, the diff there is a quite a difference because here you analyze number of patients after having subsetted, while here you do first uh, the analyze number of patients and then the subset. Um, so here we want to summarize. Why summarize and not uh, again uh, analyze? Because um, this is um, working on the labels, so on the split values. <clears throat> While the first one was working on the cells, just on the um, on the let's say leaves of this uh, tree or this subsetting. So <clears throat> we put null because we want the same labels uh, as the split values, and we get here. Next, we want to count the occurrences of each level in a variable. Um, and we will use um, a, a, um, a, B, O, D, Sys, which is um, our PT, our preferred term. Um, this is, um, again, something that depends on your data set. So, of course, uh, do everything in the pre-processing step, like uh, see which variables are the one that you are interested in and so on. So, 
we want to count occurrences. And I think uh, that's it. And you have the occurrence. Of course, it's different from the region because it's a slightly different data set um, than the one that I used here. Um, next, we can append a variable. This is um, just done for, um, for adding the some information to the top left. So this can be very useful if you want to have um, um, a clear top left. And you can say that you added um, what is the label of that variable. So for example, if you, if you look at that variable in this data set uh, specifically, you will see that it's decorated with a label. It's just an attribute of label. And there are a lot of um, um, functionality in turn to do it. You can, um, you can relabel, re um, yeah, reapply your labels um, and, and so on. <clears throat> so next, this is, we build the table, we build the table, and this is our um, adverse event with uh, um, system organ class and the prefactor. Uh, yeah, we can see that um, accounts def, uh, DF has a different counts than um, any aggressive uh, adverse events because, um, of course, we uh, use the alt counts DF, so the um, ADSL number of patients and not the ADA. Um, now, it's time for questions. Okay. There are a few here. <laughs> um, yes, you can generate a p value, it's one of the stats. Um, uh, combining the same split calls by um, I don't understand the question by Oscar um, so is it possible to combine in the same split calls by uh, so I mean for each arm, the number of uh, adverse events uh, and the number of subjects with uh, any adverse event into separate columns. Um, I'm not sure. Um, do page break at a specific position before I put in the table, for example, um, I need the uh, to page break the table at the end of a group rather than breaking up the group in the middle. So this is uh, the way, um, the difference between um, summarize uh, a number of patients and analyze number of patients, because one is considered a label and uh, the other one is not. So the label is always repeated in all the pages um, while the, um, while the, um, the analyze uh, aspect is not. Of course, you don't want to uh, um, lose uh, analyze, uh, so lose cells uh, without knowing what is their subsetting, so what is their label, uh, and that's why you do it. Maybe, maybe we can see this in an example. So this is this line per page. Um, I don't know, twenty. Uh,
Uh, sorry, let's save it as a PDF. <laughs> let's let's make it sticky. It's a bit simpler. Um, I mean, when you you will see the same. Um, so here, twenty is not uh, it's too much. So I can do five. Um, it's too little. Nine, and you can see that uh, always the summarize, so the label is actually kept, and it's never uh, lose. You don't lose uh, the information um, between the split of the pages. Yeah. Good. Let's move on. Uh, last example, then we have the exercises. Um, so this needs some pre-processing. Um, of course, this um, depends. I mean, you need to have the, um, the slides, but uh, I can tell you that already if you search for response tables, on the on the catalog, you will have exactly this information. So um, if you go to the catalog and you write response table, you you find that it's uh, it's called the RSP zero one, and um, you can see. Um, you can copy from here and you see that it's exactly the same table. Um, there is even less pre-processing apparently. <laughs> um, no. Yeah, you still have to left join the um, to create the NL, NL data set. So you need to left join uh, EDRS uh, with the ADSL. But anyway, we will see it uh, here. And um, I'll get you the the PDFs, um, the PDF of the of this presentation afterwards, so you can play with it. But if you if you want just to to start, you can copy from the TLG catalog and, and use it. Um, I mean, we can do that. Probably it's better. It's easier. So you go here to the um, Best overall response, you copy uh, the prep processing. Now here we didn't prepare the CDA uh, package because it's a bit uh, bad because it has all the um, uh, all the um, data set that we use and with different versions because CDS data changes with time. I I prepared for uh, for um, for later, but we can uh, um, you can do it now. Uh, random CDs data, which has a lighter um, only last version of the cache uh, data, so you can do that. Uh, and then here we need uh, ADRS, so it's called the C because of cache data, and then you say package. Random CDs data. Of course, we don't have um, ADSL in this form. We can say, let's load it also from uh, random CDs data. It's a bit better. It's, I think, 2,000 lines. Um, so we will have an easier life. Uh, the F explicit NA just uh, puts um, all uh, NA levels as missing. And um, you can change it uh, to whatever you want. You just uh, change the NA level in this function. And this is just uh, to be sure that we don't print uh, NAs or we, or we lose some NAs during the calculations. Like if we have a mean uh, um, NA remove. So now, um, we just select um, the things we are interested in, and we will do it this for only for one parameter. Um, then, um, as I said, we need the NL. We can copy it. 
And um, yeah, let's go for the standard table. <clears throat> so now I can show you piece by piece so we understand better. I just copy the wall of it. Um, we can uh, just attach these. So we have um, the print directly as before. Um, as you can see, this is, um, you see here, it's um, um, it's tagged as zero one because we use it for, uh, for testing. Um, we have uh, snapshots testing on all the data set, all the PLG catalog. So we are sure that every time we have a new feature, it's tested against um, <clears throat> the data set, uh, sorry, the, the wall catalog. So as you can see, it works <laughs> like magic, but uh, <laughs> it's um, you have uh, uh, exactly what we wanted at, at first, but uh, let's, uh, let's break it down. Uh, it's enough if we comment it. And then we just go. So first we have the split by columns. It does the usual uh, subsetting of the columns. Then uh, we use estimate proportions uh, to calculate uh, um, the number of responders. <clears throat> we have uh, also counts. And uh, this is the confidence interval. Uh, with, uh, I think, wild estimation with correction. There are, uh, I think, 10 kind of uh, different methods that you can try. Um, then we have, um, you can um, estimate the proportional difference. So this is the unstratified analysis. We have also the certified analysis. And you have the difference in response rate. Um, and in this case, uh, uh, we used uh, as a ref group um, the drug A, so sorry, drug X, so the arm A. And um, you can see that um, again, we use the same uh, um, confidence interval estimator and so on. And so on. Then we, we use a test to test this proportional uh, difference um, with a p value. Someone asked about the p value, and here it is. <laughs> Uh, this is just a key square test. Uh, we have a chi square test. We have other methods. Again, um, I invite you to just uh, do um, search for the documentation. We take care about uh, about it. So we have uh, key square, Shelton, Fisher, and CMH uh, that I never remember what it stands for. Anyway, then you have. Um, uh, helper function that uh, specify exactly on the methods um, with all the descriptions uh, about them. You can also isolate them, uh, add stuff if you want, uh, if you if your method is not there and so on. We would be ha um, happy to um, to have new methods if you if you need one. Uh, we would uh, help you. Then um, we can estimate the odds right here with the, um, another custom function from turn. And um, last, we can also estimate multinomial response. And this uh, um, has also a split in it. So we have uh, the complete response, the partial response, and so on, so forth, so on, so forth. So, questions? Uh, yeah, okay. No questions. <laughs> Sorry, I went a bit fast. I think I have still a bit, right? Um, I think I have still 10 minutes, something like this, five minutes. Um, yeah, I think today's workshop goes to, is it, uh, I can't remember, is it two hours, two and a half hours? I, I think you have- Two, two and a half? But, uh... Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so um, I already showed you how to get here, <laughs> but anyway, um, 
this is the, um, the catalog and it's, it's open source. You can also have uh, the developer branch if you want, and you just click on here and we have the dev branch. Uh, you can make it darker and you can get to the GitHub page. Then you can uh, go on Slack. So you can also ask us directly. Now this is gonna crash me everything, I'm sure. Okay, let's go back. <laughs> anyway, you get on Slack from there. Um, then you, of course you have GitHub and uh, we are very active on GitHub. So any issue you post uh, will be read. And um, another important thing is that um, uh, you can add reactions to the, <laughs> to the templates. Okay, sorry, for I forgot to, to specify all of these uh, details. Um, so for example, if you have a, a, an adverse event, uh, um, safety summary table, um, you can find it uh, in the drop down menu on the left where you have tables, listings, uh, plots, so graphs. Um, you have the title and description, data setup, um, then uh, different variations of the of the table so table with medical concept sections and so on um then you have also reproducibility in which you have the section info so you know how it, this was built and this was running then you have the till info uh till up if you want to also create your own till up um I think Donny talked about this before me, and then you can host it on your, uh, like also uh, if you want also on the positive cloud as we speak. Um, yeah, as I said, you can add reaction. I will add uh, a reaction to this table. <laughs> Maybe a lot is better. Um, and you can add comments. So like, for example, here we have, uh, some internal teams that were uh, that need uh, exactly this table for um, some of their deliveries, and um, they had to ask uh, a couple of uh, different questions, as you can see. Um, and we, I mean, here I answered, here Joe answered, and we are very active. Uh, this is uh, directly mirrored on GitHub, so. We can create issues from this and so on. Yeah. Um, are there any plans to export to GT? We have uh, an exportable to flex table, and I think you can export to GT very easily from there. Um, <clears throat> if I don't remember wrong, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, I think you can uh, do like uh, ET to flex table. Uh, yeah, it's not installed. I think it's installable. Yeah. Thankfully, the uh, the cloud has uh, this magnificent feature of, <laughs> of binaries. And uh, anyway, you can uh, directly do it like this. And you can see now it has the format of our tables, but with the new export doc, uh, it's still not there. With the new export doc um, as doc, uh, uh, docx, you will have uh, different uh, fashions that you can add it to it. One of those is actually uh, made for being nice in the doc X. So keep that in mind for the future. Um, it's easily customizable too. I mean, I made the first team, <laughs> so I, I can help you if you need it. Um, okay, of course, this is what I was saying about the feedback. Uh, you will get these slides uh, at a certain point. Uh, maybe Emily, you are in the in the chat. If you if you can if you can work work it out with the the slides, would be amazing. 
Um, yeah, so you can click on all of these besides uh, looking at this uh, um, underlined blue. And um, <clears throat> yeah, of course, uh, all the APIs are have uh, vignettes. And uh, mainly our tables is very is going really into the depth and of uh, into the engine of the framework, and you will have uh, very soon on the on main on the main website. Um, you will have uh, the um, um, the dev guide. So we were working about uh, documenting how it works um, because it's all S four and S three. Uh, methods and classes. Um, that's why you can keep this level of abstraction and be relatively elastic. So to be able to export in different formats, to talk with different packages and so on. Um, so yeah, we will provide also the dev guide uh, in which there, there are also other stuff like do, uh, how to debug and, and so on. Um, yeah, this is the, the the developer version, I think, of the um, of the table. So this is coming from the main uh, repository. Of course, it's generated and um, it's also tested and so on. You will have also, I think, uh, this presentation here at a certain point um, with all the videos uh, when they will be released. You see, there are all the um, relevant um, vignettes. So you have, uh, for example, example for clinical trials um, and so on. This is to show you how um, how you can build your own tables uh, from scratch when you want to actually to have your summary, a summary function or you already have one that you use for another package uh, like GT, you just want to see how it works. And you want to learn how to do it, and you will see. You can see here everything. Uh, you need to know to to really build your own turn, let's say, and um, to to use the R tables engine. Of course, it's more convenient if you if you use a TLG catalog, and you see how we did that, and that's why you can also check the turn API. This is available on the, under the same organization, so science engineering in on GitHub. And uh, as you can see, it's um, it has a lot of uh, um, data visualizations, like forest plots um, and uh, Kaplan Meyer plots, Cox regression, and a lot of stuff that I didn't cover today, and so on. Um, yeah. So yeah, I can show you maybe a plot just for for fun, like uh, one uh, one efficacy graph. Um, of course, you have the preprocessing again here. You can copy and and then you have this kind of uh, forest. I think. It's called, um, and it's very simple to tabulate. And you see that you have a nice um, R table tables here, and then you have uh, attached the, the plot. Yeah, we're also working on uh, R listings, um, but we will not cover this uh, this uh, master class. Um, of course, any questions, as I said, multiple times uh, can be answered. Here. In any of the repositories, from TL to Turn, R tables, TLG catalog has its own repository, of course. Or you can just uh, comment on with Giscus on the TLG catalog. Probably is the fastest. So the first exercises. We have two exercises today. Um, what does uh, your QC process look like when using R tables? So in general, uh, validations. Our approach to validation is um, is um, from a software development point of view. So we have um, everything in place to be tested and auto validated. We use also 
how to validate um, system that uh, you might be familiar with. I think there will be a talk or was a workshop about it, um, which is um, it's basically it's more string it's more uh, strict than CRAN and it's really making our thousands and thousands of uh, tests worth. So if even one number changes from uh, the original uh, SAS validated um, uh, calculations, uh, we will know. Um, as a general approach, we are working on, um, on doing it from the ground up. So this is actually a very interesting question. We are working on it uh, for, uh, um, let's say, minimize what the need of double programming. Of course, um, we will never change this paradigm as it's very, um, very intertwined with uh, with how uh, regulatory submission are done. But um, yeah, the plan, uh, one of the plans is to, to get validation uh, as, as soon as possible of uh, numbers. Of course, uh, the majority of the results we have now have uh, been validated um, since the beginning. So we have uh, done uh, for every statistical method uh, a SAS counterpart that was, um, so therefore, um, then we kept the results as it was and, uh, and so on. Also, you, are, you need to know that this is, um, I mean, we, we are also based on a lot of uh, uh, softwares, analytical tools that are, I mean, on which all R is based. So if you ever do something in R and you use the, I mean, you do some uh, mean, of course you use the, the R tables, they are based R1. So um, um, there is also some uh, heritage to talk about and some uh, community. It's um, it's a big discussion to to be to be honest. Uh, for uh, for the study teams at the moment we do uh, we do also double programming, um, of course, and um, we have um, functions that transform all of these in. Uh, I mean, I can show you very briefly. Um, so like we are at this table and uh, we can um, just say as result df table and we have uh, everything um, well formatted for uh, uh, QC. Um, I saw the results of doing, of exporting from SAS um, these kind of tables and I think they are much more um, say complicated than it should. So I think um, um, the step here for for real QC with SAS uh, that we have uh, or I mean better we we are working on it's um it's also to to merge these two processes to have a, a pipeline but uh, it's all uh, it's all a bit dis you know, under discussions. I think um, <clears throat> I think it's um, it's a general problem, as I'm sure you're well aware of. So first exercise, <laughs> if there are no other questions related to, if you're a machine, uh, uh, so if you're matching against us, is all the rounding done as a zero dot five rounds up? versus around two even. So it's done uh, as um, <clears throat> in the first way. So differently from SAS, but um, it's um, it's really a matter of, uh, of standards. Uh, so I think it's, um, um, I mean, we, we can provide also these format functions and we never had to so far. Because um, because uh, our tables has the whole number, right? So you can do this afterwards. Um, that's the advantage of having classes and so on. So our tables is a structure, and you can see here that you have the whole number. So there is no. I mean, I even saw once uh, some people doing QC by just taking the the result, the printed result, and I think that's. That's not the best because you you would lose a lot of information, um, <clears throat> and you would uh, 
go towards this error, which is a huge error if you if you think about it. Um, so we delegate this to the QC team, which is not us, and um, they take care of it. We provide uh, a way to get the, the full result. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> also, incidentally, I think it's a better a better policy for a, a significant digit in, in general. But anyway, um, to keep the information until the last moment, and then you can do the calculations and also propagate the error and so on. But anyway, that's an entire discussion, I think. <laughs> um, sorry for uh, um, diverging. <laughs> anyway. Emily, if you you can tell me when uh, when it's your time, also Jessica. Um, you have time I if will... you need to present okay. some examples, but we can take over also if you're done. <laughs> I mean, there are two exercises. Um, they are based on um, so <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, yeah. So this issue, so someone posted something to solve the issue um, of the truncation of the rounding. Anyway, <clears throat> also again, our, uh, our tables turn and the TLG catalog work with um, also with format functions. So it's enough you put uh, your custom function in, so you get the number right, and you have to output a string. So. It's, Relatively easy. I can probably show you this um, again very fast. Um, then we have uh, classical mean, um, which is the standard uh, in science. So, uh, we can say format equal function of x uh, has to take the dots. Um, and then you say, I don't know, you can even say one. <laughs> uh, it's very not usable, but um, just. Uh, Um, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, you need actually to go from the function. So let's say analysis function. Um, and then you do uh, our cell. Like mean equal mean. When you have format, you can say function. Um, let's say text. Let's say output. Then again, the dots. It's getting very ugly, so I will go back. Um, <clears throat> And uh, this is another function, of course. Uh, and um, yeah, you can say around out this one. I hope this works. I didn't try it before. Uh, yeah, let me check. Yeah, this is a bit uh, core our tables. Um, you don't need to know this, of course. Um, yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> you need to to put uh, this out. Yeah. And you say you can say plus one. Um, 
like in this case, or you can say, say, um, I mean, you can do whatever you want here. Do this if you want. Um, and you can see that it, this is very pragmatic and uh, you can solve all the kind of rounding you want. Uh, of course, for QC, you have to use uh, as a result uh, DF. And in this case, you would ruin uh, the, um, the format. So you wouldn't have the whole number. So you have to pay attention what is uh, for print and what is for uh, QC. So um, now it's time to try building tables yourself. I hope someone tried. We have questions, maybe. Uh, um, yeah. Thank you, Jessica. Um, okay. Well, seems so good. If there are no questions, we can move on. I'll take only five minutes. A minute. Um, again, uh, this is um, similar to XT01. So if you want, just go to the TLG catalog and search for it. Um, and you can see we have a uh, exposure, XT01. And um, yeah, you, you have a basically a longer version of what uh, what we have uh, in the um, XSI. Of course, I invite you to try uh, by yourself to do it. And um, the, um, the interesting thing here is that you need to keep only three uh, splits and use uh, usually split functions to do so. And um, I don't know if people are trying at the moment, um, but um, yeah, you would uh, you would um, search for this um, information about the split functions because you want to select the levels of parameters uh, that you want to display in our tables. So you would uh, take this kind of um, root. Split functions are ways of uh, uh, changing the subsetting. So it's like uh, an enhanced filtering. And you can also create your own split functions. So you can uh, filter the data, change the data, combine the data as you wish. And this is very, very powerful. Like you can also, uh, instead of doing all this pre-processing, uh, like uh, doing cumulative uh, um, groups, like distribution, um, you just uh, do it with the split functions and um, can be very, very useful. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I suggest using uh, using dev tools in general. I would say install GitHub and just write uh, uh, without a release, just write the name of the repository. Like insights. Um, I mean, I can show you for uh, uh, here. So I think I added in those tools. Um, And then uh, the place it's uh, in sites, uh, engineering. Um, yep, yeah. CDA. Now this goes well, but I think uh, 2022 is a bit too fatty for um, the cloud. Yeah, no. Maybe yes. Okay. Um, 
So this is the next segment of our presentation. Um, we're going to cover the new cross company collaboration project called Falcon. Um, and this project was started in an effort to harmonize clinical reporting standards for tables, listings, and graphs, or TLGs, in the pharma industry. Um, and I work at Roche on the Nest project with Davide, but I'm also a developer on the Falcon project. And I'll be doing this presentation with my other Falcon developer, Jessica, who works at Boehringer Ingelheim. Um, and she will be doing the later half of the presentation. So before we get to the content, um, I posted the slides on the website. So this is the Falcon website. I will post the link in the chat and you can go down on the main page to presentations and there should be a link called slides beside the uh, link for this presentation. Um, that will just download the PowerPoint to your PC. Um, so here's a brief overview of what we'll be covering today for Falcon. Um, so after giving you an introduction, I'll be passing it over to Jessica and she will start with the demo on Posit Cloud to demonstrate how it can be used. So let's start off with the motivation. Um, so why was the initiative started? I'm sure most of you are familiar with CDISC um, and SDTM or ADAM standards. These standards are widely adopted within the pharma industry, allowing for easy sharing, reuse of data, and remove barriers that might otherwise prevent industry collaboration. Across the industry, companies use this data that follows these standards every day um, for their clinical reporting. And so the question we asked is why are the TLGs different, made by different companies? So since the data is standardized, it would follow that all companies could theoretically create identically formatted TLGs with the only difference being the data values. Um, since we all sort of follow the same structure, this means that the data could be processed the same way. Um, everyone has the same variable names, the same data types, that sort of thing. Um, but the small subtle differences between table layouts uh, they mainly come from the different packages that are being used to generate the TLGs. Um, so our idea is to create a harmonized version, a harmonized package, I guess you could call it, of TLG templates that use standardized data that everyone can use to create the same layouts. Um, so. In comes the integrated guide for standard safety tables and figures, which is provided proposed by the FDA. And our idea was to work together to implement these tables and create a cohesive set of TLG layouts. So number one, we already have a common toolkit that's ready to use, which will enable this. In this case, that would be the open source packages that are available on CRAN that can be used to create the TLG templates. Um, for this project, we chose to primarily use the Nest packages to build our TLG layouts. Um, together, we have our collective input that will ensure the layouts are both standard and able to suit everyone who contributes needs. Um, by establishing a set of best practices for TLG development right now, we can make any potential collaboration later much simpler and every company is able to offer their unique perspective on what they might want to improve the layouts. So we can test our data based on multiple different companies and make sure everyone's happy with the output. And by creating one single layout for every TLG that's listed in this guide, we allow for more efficient data review processes in all companies, which will lead to quicker product delivery by everyone and establish a must, much easier entry point for collaboration for new joiners. Um, so by making the um, Falcon project open source and available to everyone, we encourage developers to learn about the project and hopefully lead to wider adoption and eventually a universal, universal standard for these TLGs. So now we'll cover exactly what the Falcon initiative is. You might be wondering what has happened so far in the project, how we might work. 
and what it really entails to be a part of this project. So this is our current team. Uh, we have six product owners and nine developers from four different companies as of now. Those are Roche, Boehringer, Engelheim, Sanofi, and Moderna. And contribution really varies between developers with some choosing to commit more of their time to the project, but any and all contributions to the project are welcome, of course. Um, and a great advantage of this project is that we have a diverse group of developers and everyone sort of offers their own opinions and we get development work done pretty quickly since we have people all around the globe. Um, we have had several new additions since the start of the project and we are always looking to expand the team. So whether you're a developer or product owner and whether you're from one of these companies or not, please feel free to reach out and Jessica will discuss in more detail how you can join the team later. So what, <clears throat> sorry, what have we accomplished so far? Um, the idea for the initiative began at the end of 2022. So the companies agreed to pursue the open source collaboration effort together. Um, and then in Q1 of this year, we actually established the initial team of product owners and developers and created a GitHub repository to host our work. Developer work is organized and tracked on a project board. So we have um, sort of an organized collaboration effort, but Jessica will cover that again later. Um, and we agreed to develop the R packages primarily using the open source nest packages again, which would be mainly R tables in turn with a little bit of R listings as well. And me and the other developers from the nest team have helped to onboard everyone to use these tools. Um, then in Q2, we started active development on the tables and we also launched a comprehensive website, uh, the one that's linked in the chat, that includes any information about the project, as well as how to set up and use the Falcon R package. Um, and the website is updated regularly and a great resource for anyone learning to wanting to learn more about the project. Uh, I think we currently have about 20 templates right now, and we are always working on more. So you can look at those right now or, you know, Go to the website whenever you have time. Uh, Jessica will also go through the website, so you can um, stay tuned for that as well. So now that we are in Q4, we are hoping to increase awareness of the initiative with presentations um, and different um, announcements to the public to gain more collaborators and users of the package. Uh, there will be another presentation at Fuse EU later this month or sorry, at the beginning of next month. So if you're attending that, you can see that as well. Um, and the Falcon Initiative is a great opportunity to learn more about TLG development using Nest packages, as well as just to get involved if you're interested in a cross-company project. Um, so now we will get started with how to get started using the Falcon R package for your own clinical reporting purposes. And so here is a dependency graph of what packages are used from Nest to create Falcon. Um, and they all sort of build upon each other. So Formatters provides the basic framework for our tables, which you should be somewhat familiar with by now. Um, and also for our listings, which you won't really get into. Um, then from our tables stems um, turn, of course which provides the suite of clinical analysis functions that we use to create the table layouts in Falcon. Um, and unlike the, unlike the TLG catalog, which provides the code for each table layout, uh, Falcon encapsulates all of the code that you need and packages everything into user-friendly functions, which make the TLGs that adhere to these standards. Um, now, because Falcon is built on these nest packages, all the exporting and pagination options that we have for our tables would also work on anything that's produced with Falcon. And we can eventually integrate that directly into the Falcon package as well, depending on the needs of the users. So since the package is not widely used and pretty new, we have created some templates also using alternative open source table engines to gauge interest, see if people are more familiar with these instead. 
Um, so if you are familiar with one of these alternatives, you might find it useful to compare the Falcon output created with the main R tables function with the Falcon tplyr or gt summary function, which should be about identical. Um, that would be a good way to sort of start off if you're not familiar with R tables. Um, and since there, this was sort of a more recent idea, there's several currently in the works, but mostly um, not many are developed with these two. So it's easier to start off with R tables. But if you want to check out the differences between these two alternatives and the R tables version, you can go to the table two template, which has all three options. So first off, if you are using the package, this is the installation process, I guess. So you first want to install your nest dependencies. Um, if you already have those installs, you can you can skip the first part and just go straight to the second part. Um, so Falcon is currently um, in development just on GitHub, but we do plan to release on CRAN later this year. Um, unfortunately for us, there's already a package called Falcon on CRAN. So we will be changing the name of the package at some point before then, but we will also publicize the new name ahead of that time. So hopefully no confusion occurs. <laughs> um, okay, and now let's get to the technical overview. Before the demo, I'll just go a bit more in depth into the development side and how we create the TLG generating functions. So this will hopefully give you a better idea of how the package could be used. We'll start with this table. This is table seven. Um, and this is just a screenshot from the FDA guide. Uh, we'll cover the basics of the Falcon function that's used to create the table and then some of the customization options that are also available. So this is a first look. This is just what you can expect as your output if you're using Falcon. So you can tell it's sort of similar to the previous page. Um, all the information in the table would be the same, just different formatting. Um, hopefully it's clear to you guys and it would be easy for you to digest the information there. Um, before we break it down, here are the uh, arguments that are available for this uh, function make table seven, which you might guess makes table seven from the FDA guide. That's sort of our naming convention. So most of these arguments would be standard across all of the functions in the package. So you always have the same sort of options. If you want to add annotations, for example, all of the functions will have um, an option to add annotations. Um, and we will go through each of these and just I'll briefly describe what they do. So first off, we have ADAE. Um, so for the first argument in every function will always be the input data set. Uh, if there's any data set specific variables, such as AE term for ADAE, um, then we will specify the name of the expected data set, but anything with the required variables will work there. Um, and if any of the required variables are missing from your data, an error will, error will occur when you run the function, um, and it will tell you what's missing. Next up, we have the alt counts df option, which can be used if, for example, not all the subjects from the study population are present in your um, the other data set you're using. So for example, if you had 400 subjects in ADSL and only 390 of them had records in ADAE, you could specify ADSL here. Then we have show call counts, which would just be um, a flag to tell you whether you want to include the column counts at the top of each um, column. Then we have armbar, which is just allowing you to specify which variable should be used to identify treatment arms. You might want to use act arm or arm, depends on your study, I guess. Um, then we have SAFFL var. Uh, so that's the safety population flag. Um, and most of the TLGs in the FDA guide only use the safety population. So that's why that's there. Um, we try to include a customizable parameter for all variables used in the table that might be different depending on the study. Um, and then any required variables that are hard-coded will be listed in the documentation for the function. 
and also on the Falcon website. Uh, next, if you want to include an overall column with the entire population, you could specify a label for that column here or leave it as no and that column won't be included. Um, similar to the last one, if you leave this as known, nothing will happen. If you change it to um, the configuration for a risk difference column, so that would be a list specifying the two arms that you want to compare. Um, and there's a couple other options as well. You can see more detail on that parameter in the document documentation like the other things. Um, but yeah, this would be used to specify that. Then we have prune zero, which indicates whether you want to prune rows with only zero values. Uh, NA level, which is the level you want to sort of display in your table um, to represent NA values. So you can put whatever you want here. You can just put NA and it would show up as a level, like a different row. Um, but if you don't want to include these, you could just remove them during your own pre-processing as well. And then finally, we have annotations, which would be any titles, subtitles, footnotes, et cetera, that you want to decorate your TLG with. Um, and again, you can find more details on the argument in the Falcon website or the function documentation. So next, we will break down the function. Uh, we'll start by looking at the pre-processing steps. So number one, we always do variable checks at the beginning of our function. That will return an error message if anything's wrong, if anything's missing in your data set, that would be expected. Um, and then we will do data processing. So just sort of preparing it to go into the layout, uh, setting labels, things like that. After this, we have the layout creation. So similar to what Davide was showing earlier with the R tables and turn functions, you can see the layout that we use for this function and this uh, table on the right would be what comes out if you just use the default arguments for make table seven. Um, but you can see sort of right here, which functions correspond to which parts of the layout. So there's several R tables and turn functions, and then a couple different things specific to Falcon, like show call counts will um, is shown in red, so you can see that that's where that comes from. And then, yeah, this table is sort of basic, so not much to it, but you can see where everything comes from if you're interested. Uh, next off, we have the actual table generation. So this, again, will also happen inside the function. Um, so everything's encapsulated. Uh, this will use your data and just generate the table. Uh, this is what would happen if you had the table by itself without pruning. And then if you set prune zero to true, you would get this. So it would get rid of any rows that have only zero values. Um, and you'd end up with a much simplified table. Um, and again, you can customize a table to look more like the output that you'd expect by adding risk difference or table titles, things like that, uh, which is done in this table. Um, and again, here you can see what we're comparing that to. And most of the values are pretty similar. Uh, we have the total deaths, the treatment emergent deaths, non-treatment emergent deaths on the side. And then we have the same um, sort of layout with the N and the percentage for each column. Okay, and now I'm going to hand it over to Jessica, who's going to start off with a live demo on Posit Cloud. So take it away, Jessica. All right. I'm going to jump right in. I hope you can see the screen. Stop me if not. Um, I prepared the environment such as Emily explained. I installed all dependencies, I installed the Falcon package, so nothing to do here. And I'm going to start with a quite basic table. So I went into the standard safety tables and figures guides provided by the FDA in August 2022. And I chose table six for my first example here, which is quite a nice overview of adverse events. 
Um, we have counts in here, mostly, no, only counts, but we also have um, a risk difference column, which makes it quite, quite nice. And um, my first, inf the first information I need is to think about what data do I need? And obviously I need adverse events data. So this I already prepared. I read in adverse events data. I already loaded the Falcon um, package and I also loaded ADSL data to have subject level information, which I will use later. So before we do anything, let's take a look at the table functionality. And I want to produce table two. So my function is called make table two. And if we open the help, we can check no, not table two, table six, sorry. And um, if I open the help, I can check which defaults are set here. And the min minimum I need is an arm variable and the safety flag variable, which is set to arm and SAFFL. So let's maybe check on the ADAD data, if this is already in there or if we need to modify the parameters. And when I look here, I see that there is indeed the arm column and there is indeed the safety flag column, um, yeah, determined to SAFFL. So I can use this function, make table six right away without modifying anything and put the ADAE data set in here. In, uh, and if I, I click at on control and enter to execute things here, and what you can see right away, we do have this nicely looking table here, which has anything we have seen in the FDA table. I'm not going to jump back and forth, but you have to believe me or to look it on yourself. Um, but what we can see is that this total counts don't seem very right. So um, what I can see in the ADSL data set, we do have 400 subjects, but um, this is much more than 400 in total. And this is because um, the table six um, per default counts the events. But, but what we want to have here is counts per subject. So I'm going to use the alternative counts data frame parameter here, meaning that I copy this over. Once again, put the ADAE data set in here and use the alt counts DF with the subject level data set, the ADSL. Press again, control enter. And now we do have the right column counts here. What we also could do if we don't want to have column counts at all, there is this show call counts parameter. And when I set this one to false instead of true, which is the default, then it suppresses the call, suppresses the call counts and we yeah, don't have them in here. There's also the option to add a total column. I'm going to do this by using the label overall parameter, which allows me to activate this total column and additionally to set my own label here. For example, all patients. And now you can see there is the column with all patients and um, it's good for cross-checking. The total N is 400, which is also the total number of subjects in the subject level data set. Now, if you remember, we had, we didn't have the all patients column in the guide suggested, but we did have the risk difference suggested. So let's maybe instead of making an overall column, a risk difference column. I'm going to reuse this function call again, setting the risk diff parameter. And the risk diff parameter expects 
a list with certain entries. The basic ones are the arm X, which is the column I want to compare my, uh, my active treatment to. So I'm gonna put this to placebo and then I specify the arm Y and make it drug A. And that's it. So if you want to have um, to see more details on how the risk difference is created, um, this adopts directly the functionality of the R tables risk difference functionality. So I recommend to have a look in the uh, documentation of the R tables risk dif R tables risk difference. Um, what's also quite nice is that you can um, again specify your own label if your if this one is not sufficient for you but I find it quite nice and um, you can also choose whether the output should be returned as percentages or not. Okay what else do we need for having a presentation ready table? We probably want to have a title and a footnote or more. Um, let's make it one. So I once again copy this over and style it a little bit so that you can read everything. And now I'm going to make use of the annotations parameter. This again expects a list. And um, you can enter here title, subtitles, main footer and prop footer. I choose here title. Title is probably table six. So I just copy this over here. And let's make it a footer as well. And when we send it to the console, we can see we have the title above the table and the footer beneath the table, just as we're hopefully used to it. So this was a quite basic example. We only needed to enter the ADAE data set without any pre-processing steps so far, because everything was ready which is why I chose this example. But let's now get to yet another example. I'm going to make this a little quicker than planned. But um, we again have an ADSL data set. And what we can see um, that is that I already loaded a laboratory data set as well, because the table that we are about to produce is the following. It's the baseline demographic table that is also supposed to, di to display clinical characteristics that have been observed at baseline and were um, like substantial for the safety evaluation. And what we want to show here is demographic data like sex, age, age groups, race, ethnicity, ethnicity and the country. And for a baseline characteristics, I choose the C-reactive protein measurements from the laboratory values. So what I'm about to do is um, I'm going to show you the help page again. Well, I should have it already open. And here we can see that it expects more variables than the other table. And since I have already checked up front, we do have all those variables in here. So I can go with the, um, with the defaults here. Let me just copy this over. So 
I could go ahead and make table six with the ADA. Table two now, so I'm all confused with the ADSL data set. This should work. And it worked. But what we don't have now, of course, since we didn't specify it, is the laboratory characteristic. That means I have to combine the necessary information from the laboratory data set. And I, I want to present the pre-processing as well. But for the sake of time, I don't. I just tell you that I filtered the laboratory values for CRP parameter at baseline and selected the relevant variables and forgot to load the deploy R package. So now it should work. Yes. And then I can join the ADSL with the ADLB data set together and prepare one presentation ready data set, the baseline demographics. And now when I put the baseline baseline demographic data set into the make table two function. It will also show, it didn't, yeah, it didn't because I didn't specify the variables new. So what, what, I, what happened now is that I chose the, uh, the default variables, which of course don't have my filtered value in here. So I'm gonna add those as well. And now we see a value and some parameters, but we don't know what value it is. This is the time um, where we want to add informative labels. So um, there is this label vars parameter and it defaults to default labels, but I'm gonna feed in my own here now. So that what, what I want to do is I create a vector of labels and I adapt all of the labels because I also want to include like units here. And my last value needs to be the C reactive protein. Um, make sure that you have the same order in the labels as you have in the variable parameter. And then you can add the labels. after you run it. And now it looks much better. I now know what my values are for. I know no, know uh, the units. So this is much better looking. Of course, you can also add annotations here as well. And um, yeah, deactivate call counts and so on. In this case, I didn't have to spe specify the alternative counts, the F, because um, my data set was already on subject level. So um, I'm going to shorten this a little bit and jump now into the web page, as Emily promised. If you open the link Emily already shared on the chat, I believe, then you will come directly to our home page. Um, which has in there what is Falcon, of course, um, an overview of upcoming talks. So as Emily said, we will present a diffuse EU as well. And the contributors we have so far, um, the most crucial part for you probably is the template library, which you can also access via the template library index. And here you have an overview of all tables that have been produced by us so far. And in here is as well, you will find table six and table two as well. I'm going to show you the page for table two because it has a little bit more content than table six. Um, but all of these tables have a common look. 
The first tab always has the specification screenshot directly from the FDA guide. Then there is the expected output if you use the standard function, the code with which this out output has been produced, and details about the usage of the function, which is basically a description of all the parameters and the default um, settings. Then for table two, we also have additional um, functionalities to create a tplyr table and to create a GT summary table. And for all of them, there is also the example code and like, along with the screenshot. So um, let me check if I forgot anything crucial here. Let me quickly repeat what Emily already said in the motivation because repetition is key. Our goals are to, um, we want in a nutshell to establish best practices to produce standard lay layouts for TLGs that can be used across companies. Um, and the aim was here that we can collaborate easier, that we get closer together. And on the other hand, submission could become more efficient if we all provide tables with a common look and feel because we as pharma companies and data scientists, we don't have to think about how do I want my data to look like? How do I want my data to be presented? We don't have to go into lengthy discussions about the presentation of content because it's all there is already a good way to do it and we can just make use of it. And um, on the other hand, reviewers, will receive the same looking tables, meaning that they already know where to look for information they want to. Meaning that in the end, it is the patient who benefits fits from this efficiency. As third part, I also want to stress that open source products, of course, become more user-friendly and reliable the more people use it, the more people give feedback on it, and then one can adapt it. And this is also why we are here in, on the R in Pharma presenting. Um, we, again, we want to increase awareness. We will also present at the FUSE EU, EU next month. And we are already reaching out to see this and have more ph pharma companies interested. Uh, so we really want to collaborate here and make this something we want to do together. In the future, there is the CRAN release, which Emily already said that we might have to change the name or we do have to change the name, but um, we will let you know how it turns out. And of course, there are already plans to expand the scope a little bit. Um, so we plan to look beyond safety tables and also look into common analysis in trials. So, if you're curious now, now I really want to encourage you. Um, we really would love to see you join. It is structured in two, or our project team is structured in two parts. Uh, we do have the product owners who prioritize tasks, who refine the requirements, who make all the strategic planning and provide the project roadmap. And on the other hand, it's us developers, Emily and I are developers, and we are responsible for the package development. We, we take our tasks and take and track our progress on a GitHub project board. And we meet usually weekly, um, just more or less informal to exchange about our progress and also to discuss te technical things. We support each other, so nobody is alone in here. Um, it's quite nice to see all, yeah, to see us all working together. So if you now are interested, it's probably best to join us in the Slack channel reach out, ask your questions. And of course, if you're interested to collaborate, drop us a note. Then 
on the other hand, if you want to get more information first before you join, feel free to drop into the web pages in the Pharmaverse page in general or particularly into our Falcon page. And of course, you can already have a look at the code at the GitHub, um, comment on issues or report a bug or not, just as you like. Last but not least, I want to thank all of the people who are already involved. Special thanks to Jürgen and Vincent who allowed Emily and me to adopt their presentation for, from the views. So um, thank you all. And of course, thank you for your attendance and for your interest and that you stayed. And I guess we have couple more minutes for Q&A now. We're now wrapping up. We'll pick things back up next week. We've got some workshops on Monday and then some Pharmaverse talks um, at the conference. But it looks like one question's come in. Um, it says, will Falcon supersede Chevron Citril? Anybody want? Um, no, that's not the plan. They're sort of like adjacent, I guess. Um, Chevron and Citril are not specifically for like FDA standards, um, but they do sort of do the same thing. But yeah, it's a separate sort of idea and a separate um, purpose that it was created for. So I think the table is showing like the FDA standards, um, but we can always add new parameters or um, change statistics, allow people to um, customize that themselves as well, um, depending on user input and what people ask for. So thanks for letting us know. And uh, I see somebody's asked when the name will be changed. Um, I think in the next few weeks, we will know what the new name is going to be, and then we will um, publicize that. Um, and then the CRAN release should be hopefully by the end of the year. Um, and again, we will let everyone know when that happens as well. A couple other ones. Uh, did you see the one on uh, where would someone go that if they're interested in volunteering? Yep. So I think Jessica showed the slide previously, um, but it's on the website. Uh, there's a bunch of links um, that you can use. You can go to the Slack channel. You can go to the GitHub. Um, you can send us an email um, and just let us know you're interested and we can add you to the GitHub repository to contribute and also to our weekly meetings if you're interested in that. I'm just about to share the link to the Slack channel as a starting point. Perfect. Is that in uh, the Pharmaverse Slack by chance? Or is that a separate Slack, do you know? I think it's part of the Pharmaverse. Ah, okay, perfect, perfect. Somewhere else at some point, um, but Emily and Jessica, I didn't know if you had the links to yours. You probably already shared them in the chat box. Um, so the links are available on the website, just on the first page you go to. Um, scroll down to upcoming talks and you should see slides right there in the brackets. You can just click that and it will download the PowerPoint I will probably do on the same very soon on the TLG catalog, which 